to the cloud. Great, so uh, welcome to this uh, last uh, lecture of today, the second day of the school. Um, welcome, Xavier and Thomas. Uh, thank you very much for joining us again. And so, um, uh, Xavier is going to start this uh, this last lecture. Then Thomas will will uh, will follow. So, welcome. Well, thank you, Luis. Uh, so, maybe before I I, uh, I start again, let me recap a little bit where we ended uh, yesterday, for those that were a bit tired. <laughs> um, so essentially, uh, so I told you a lot of things about quantum nanoelectronics and uh, on, on all that. Uh, now we want to concentrate a bit on the, on the modeling part, really how we do the calculations, how we do the simulations. And so we are considering uh, a very general system like this, uh, made of the central part, like the blue side here, and connected to electrodes here. And the electrodes are really infinite systems and they all have their chemical potential and their uh, temperature. Uh, okay, on, on the so on, on we 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 have a, a general Hamiltonian that looks like this. So very general quadratic Hamiltonian, except that the time dependent part will only be in the blue region, or or maybe it can be also also like a, a general shift of the voltages in the yellow regions. But I would say let's say for the simplicity, let's think that it is in the in the blue region, and we need to to have a formalism for that. So yesterday I explained. Uh, how to solve what I call the, the Pauli principle problem. Uh, I will very briefly re recap that. And then I will explain how we solve the thermodynamic limit problem, which means how we go from a finite system to a truly infinite system. And it's very important to discuss infinite systems uh, because you see, for instance, if I send a voltage pulse here, uh, if the system is, is, uh, is finite, it will actually uh, go here for and, and continue forever. It will never leave the system. And, and in particular, even if I if I do more than just sending one pulse, if I have the flow key driving uh, limit, for instance, so I, I really drive repeatedly, uh, then I excite, 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 and there is no dissipation here, no way the, no, nowhere the energy can go. Uh, and so you're going to end up in a trivial situation, which is not what you want. With the electrodes, you have relaxation. Everything will eventually go to the electrodes, and you have a well-defined uh, steady state that, that actually uh, develops in the system. Uh, okay, and then I will quickly discuss uh, a practical issue. Uh, so the Pauli principle problem, again, how do we deal with the fact that this is a many-body problem that we, uh, like two electrons cannot go to the same, uh, to the same uh, orbital? I mean, if it is occupied, it is occupied. Um, on, on the way to go, I, I'm not going to redo all the calculation I did yesterday, but essentially you first solve the problem at equilibrium. I mean, at t equals zero before you, it's not necessarily equilibrium, it can also be with a finite bias, but at, le at least in a stationary limit. So you solve the problem, you get these phases here. So is this uh, wave functions? And then you evolve, do some calculation, and then you evolve a uh, time dependent wave function according to the time dependent Hamiltonian with initial condition, which is just uh, each of them is equal to the initial bond state. So really you have to evolve all the occupied states uh, to calculate a physical quantity like the occupation of site I, for instance, which is the square of the occupations for each of these, each of the, uh, each of these uh, individual orbitals. So very simple answer. You just evolve all the occupied states. It's a bit, it's a bit cumbersome because then you have to evolve a lot of states, but that's, that's the way to go. Uh, okay, so that was a finite system. Now we, we deal with the infinite system. So now we have also these leads. Uh, and you can do exactly the same construction. Uh, first, you need to solve the, the eigenstate. Now it's a, it's a scattering problem because now it's, it's a bit different when you have an infinite system because now you have states for any energy. So energy is not the uh, an unknown anymore. It's an input. And you look for the scattering states. Uh, fortunately, this is something which is done by the quant package. So uh, you don't have to implement this yourself. Uh, otherwise, you would have to do wave matching. So create the plane waves here, the reflected waves here, there, and there, and then match with whatever you have in the middle. So this is something already implemented. And then you evolve each of these uh, uh, scattering states according to the Hamiltonian uh, with initial condition given by the starting points. So it's the same recipe as for the finite system. Uh, and you, on, okay, and you just have to do that for many energy. So now if you want to calculate, let's say a current, 
you calculate the current for each of these states, so for a given energy, and also you can have like mode channels. So this is a definition of the current like for a time dynamic model. So the majority part of side I go gradient psi, and it's the same as, as a continuous one. Uh, so you do it for given energy, and then to get the final observable, the physical observable, you have to integrate over the energy with a Fermi function uh, to, uh, that, that, uh, that give the weight to each of these contributions. And this Fermi function can be actually uh, out of equilibrium in the sense that it's, it's a stationary Fermi function that you have before you switch on the time dependent. So you could have, for instance, a, a, a bias voltage there. Uh, so you could have different chemical potential or even different temperatures hidden in this Fermi function. So that's the, the recipe, essentially, how to do time dependent uh, things for this uh, uh, transport problems. Uh, we still have a, a small problem to solve, which means that I told you, yes, that you have to evolve this uh, wave function here according to the time dependent Hamiltonian. Yes, uh, very well, but these wave functions are defined everywhere, including in the leads. They are everywhere. So there are plane waves here, whatever complicated things here, and other plane waves here on there. So we need to find a, a way out of that. And, and the, the answer to that is very simple. Uh, you just write your time dependent wave function as a sum of the stationary wave function plus some deviation. And you take this deviation as your new variable. This is your new wave function that you are looking for. So if you insert this very simple change of variable into the Schrodinger equation that you had before, you find that now the Schrodinger equation is slightly modified. Which there you're just inserting this into the previous equation. Now you have Schrodinger equation is, is really the same. So uh, this evolved with the Schrodinger equation with the same Hamiltonian. But you also have a source term that comes from this guy. And this source term is a time dependent part of the Hamiltonian times uh, the scattering wave function. So it's, it's a Schrodinger equation with a source term. Uh, so, okay, it's slightly more complicated. Now you have a source term. But the big advantage is that now your initial condition is not wave function with wave function everywhere is by construction something which is zero. So you have zero everywhere. And now let's say you that you have this blue thing start to oscillate. So you have a source term here. And this source term gives you some wave function that start to propagate according to uh, uh, Schrodinger equation. And eventually, since now the leads, you can make them, let's say, big. Uh, so, so that you don't, you don't see the end of the thing. So now you just can just make a finite simulation and you will get the, the, exact, uh, uh, the exact state. There is a, a last uh, part which I'm not going to explain in detail. I'll just give you the idea very, very briefly. Uh, so this, this part I just explained is, we call it the source algorithm. Uh, and there is a sync part. Actually, you know, you know analytically that whatever goes into this lead is never coming back. And you know that because it's an infinite lead, it's in the translation, so you know that whatever enters there is going to be a superposition of plane wave. You can actually even analytically uh, uh, calculate how it's going to propagate according to the lead. Uh, you know that analytically, but it's not trivial to implement a way to take that point into account uh, uh, numerically. And the way to do that is to add here an imaginary, let's say here, an imaginary potential, so something non-emission, that you, you increase very, very slowly. You don't want to, to create some reflection due to this potential. And this imaginary potential is going to absorb whatever arrives there. So, so it's a way to implement now on a finite system uh, fully the fact that uh, you have a finite system. And now you, you, you know that you can evolve your, your things forever and nothing is getting back. Everything is going to be eventually absorbed by this potential. And with these two things combined, you have a, a full uh, algorithm that works uh, on this linear in time and linear in the, in the number of sites you have in the system, so it's uh, as efficient as you can get. Um, just a quick word about the fact that uh, many of you might know of another uh, algorithm of formalism, which is known uh, as NEGF or Keldish formalism. It has several names or non-equilibrium grain function. Uh, and it's the exact same thing. It's the exact same thing. Uh, it's something you can show at the mathematical level, or you can even do calculation and you find the same numbers. And actually here, just to convince you, uh, I, I, I just give you explicit formulas of if you get this wave function, this time dependent wave function that I mentioned before, you can just perform an, an integral and you get uh, the, uh, you can actually get the grain function, uh, uh, this out of equilibrium grain function on the retarded grain function uh, from this kind of calculation. Actually, there is a new uh, 
uh, module in Tikman that uh, Thomas had just finished and is going to be uh, open source soon that actually uh, allows you to access to these quantities now. Uh, just just in a straightforward way. Uh, so it's totally equivalent. Yet, uh, I believe that if you want to do numerics, at least, and, and for many analytical calculation too, uh, scattering wave functions are much, much easier. And, and just to convince you briefly, this is the kind of equation that you have to solve if you, uh, if you want to do it with a grain function. And essentially, it's, this is the evolution for the grain function. So you, you have a self-energy term that accounts for the, for the leads. Uh, so it's an integral differential equation for a matrix. And then when you want to calculate the out of the equilibrium one, you need to do this double integral in time. And those are really a pain in the neck. And there is a deep reason for the fact that it is pain in the neck that you have much more information here than you do in the wave function. Um, so you, you, you are tracking the, so because with the wave function, you can reconstruct the green, but the green is much bigger. Uh, so here you are tracking far many, far too many degrees of freedom. So it's, it's much more efficient to actually deal with wave function. This is just a common for, for specialists. Okay, and uh, the last thing I wanted to say, uh, that's a practical comment. So you, you saw that at the end of the day, you have to do an integral over energy. So you have to, for instance, here, you have to calculate some quantity and then integrate over energy. Um, on this integration over energy, if you look at it, for instance, this is the kind of things, uh, so uh, this is a dispersion relation of a lead, a very simple one. So you see, this is a dispersion relation of a lead. And, and so you have energy here, and then you have the momentum here. And if you look at the kind of thing that you want to integrate as a function of energy, uh, it, it looks like that. And very easily, you have divergences uh, at, at E equals zero. These are like, like one over square root of E, there are divergences, so there are no problem mathematically, but, but they can be a pain in the neck uh, numerically. Uh, so the way to go is to actually do the integration in k-space. So we have, so you need essentially to work out the dispersion relation uh, it, it's very simple for this particular case, but for a more complex one, if you have super connectivity or spin orbit or both, or I don't know what, uh, you need automatic tools to do that for you. And then you can do the integration in case space, and then you see that in case space, what you have to integrate is much, much simpler. So for instance, this is a, an example of the precision you arrive as a function of number of points in the integration. And you see that with 100 points in case space, you get nine digits accuracy, which is far, far more than what you need. But if you try to do it in energy space, then it takes forever. Uh, so it's it's a detail, but it's an important detail for actual uh, calculation. So I'm done essentially. Just to to wrap up. Uh, so this is a, a full set of equations that you're going to uh, to solve in practice. So this source and sink. Although I would say for many users of of Tquant, you won't even need to know about these things. Uh, it helps, but uh, not need strictly speaking necessary. Uh, so so the, everything is implemented in this code, t point that uh, Thomas is going to, uh, to talk about in the next uh, two, two, three minutes. Um, and and it's, it's a very, very versatile tool. Uh, and it's as fast as it gets. So these time-dependent simulations are not fast because, uh, I mean, as I explained, you need to track many wave functions. But I would say if you have access to a cluster with a few tens of cores, uh, typically, you are in business to uh, to get the simulation. You can do things on the laptop quickly uh, for simple problems, but if you want to do real size problems, you typically need a need a cluster with a few tens of uh, of cores. And everything is extremely parallel, so that's an important part. And uh, my last, very last slide is this uh, Tquant gallery. So this uh, is a sample of the things that have been done with Tquant. Uh, the Tquant has been uh, liberated a year ago, so it's still very fresh. I mean, Quant has been uh, liberated 10 years ago, so there are a lot of applications already, but Tquant is very fresh. But already we have been using it for many things. Uh, uh, this is actually the only example I have of Floquet uh, topological insulator kind of thing. So this is actually a calculation by Michel Fruchard. I think that it's, it's actually something very close to the... Um, <clears throat> This troboscopic model with, with uh, four unitaries that uh, Mark uh, presented in the, in the previous talk. Uh, and so you can show that you, depending on how you do it, you get uh, this edge state or you get the bulk states. Um, you can do all the things I showed before, like these pulses in Max Zander interferometers, or you can stop uh, pulses. You can do uh, 
Majorana wires kind of calculations. Uh, this is a calculation in the spintronic problem where you like the skirmion moving and you look at the uh, drag, uh, current drag, uh, this fabric theory you saw already. And you can do also something important if you have a Josephson junction, so superconductor, normal superconductor, or superconductor, anything superconductor. As soon as you put a DC voltage, you're going to end up with AC Josephson effect on this kind of time dependent problems. It's by construction, even in DC, it's by construction an AC problem. And, and this is something you can also address with tip one. For instance, here you can get the multiple on direct reflection uh, on a, of the Josephson junction. So that's uh, ah, no, a very, very last thing I wanted to say. So everything I discussed today is time is, is uh, for non interacting problem. We also start to uh, have uh, modules to deal with interactions that's going to be, uh, they are not yet open source, but it's it's coming up soon. Like uh, documentation is written on things. So to some extent, we can also deal with uh, electron electron interaction. And with that, I will already stop. And uh, now I give the, the floor to, to Thomas. And Thomas is going to transform all these nice slides into actual uh, stuff that you can actually uh, do on your own computer and, uh, and, and get your own results. And thank you for your attention. Great. Thanks, uh, thanks, Javier, for, for this first part. Uh, if there are no questions, now we will switch to Thomas. Okay. I, hello. I will start sharing the screen. Okay. Uh, so I will show now the practical uh, part, what uh, Xavier uh, just explained before, how you do explicitly simulations with quant and uh, tquant. So these both are Python libraries, if you like, to do numerical quantum transport. And even so, I like to talk here about tquant. Um, we have to just see in, in, in quant how this works, because tquant is somehow an add-on on quant. So you first, um, there are small, you, you basically have to write a Python script in order to do a simulation. So you first define your system. That means the shape of your system, the dimension and the couplings. Uh, then usually you, you look at the DC properties of the system. Um, so where, where are my energy bands? What's my conductance of the system? And you also have to define observables. And uh, these, these three first steps you usually do with, with quant. So quant uh, helps you for doing, doing that. And only in the last part comes this, this t quant um, uh, uh, part to, to solve the time dependent equations. And I will show that what Xavier uh, presented, it looked very complicated, this algorithm that in this code, it's basically very simple what you have to do. Uh, okay, so just as a, a starting example, we look at this very simple one dimensional chain. It's just you have a, a 1D system which extends here from minus infinity to plus infinity. And we would like to have a central system here with 20 sides and just nearest neighbor hoppings between uh, these uh, 20 sides. So, what you do is you first, I mean, I have installed quant and tquant and so on my computer, you load um, uh, these packages. So quant here, matplotlib is just for plotting and numpy is some Python library for numerical computation. And so we first start to build an empty, empty, empty system. This is here, this quant builder, which you call. And uh, then uh, in, in the next step, we have to define a lattice. So here we will use a square lattice to uh, uh, here on, on this chain. Um, and uh, then in the next step, we we just we have to say, okay, where are now my lattice points? So I have to hop over all these points. And what I will do here, you, you see, you call the system here with this implicit loop. You just x takes values here from zero to nineteen, and you will set all these points here to uh, even so it's zero, you just define a lattice point by that. And then you can plot the system. And here you see that you first have created these 20, 20 points. Okay. Uh, then the next step, you want to, to have uh, couplings between these sides. And it's very similar, this command, but you see now you have two, uh, two positions here. You have this tuple of uh, 
of two lattice positions. And the first one on the right is uh, like the, the lattice point from where you come. And the next, uh, the x plus one is the coupling where, so from, from this lattice point x, you go to this lattice point x plus one. And we just step also over all these pairs and we set the coupling to minus one as here with what we wanted to. And I can plot this, I can execute these lines. And now you see you have these connection lines. That means you have some couplings in between these sides. And um, if I write the Hamiltonian just in this form here with this quadratic matrix, which should have some minus one here on the diagonal and the upper diagonal and the lower diagonal, I can get this information also from quant. First, I have to finalize the system always in quant. If you want to do a practical calculation, you have to finalize it more. Then quant can really calculate some stuff with it. And then we can get the matrix with this command. And I will just plot it here, the first five elements. And you see here on the upper and lower, di lower diagonal, you have the minus one and all the rest are, are zeros. So up to now, it's basically quant is some method to, to make sparse matrices here. There's nothing, nothing very special. And, uh, and we have built now this finite, finite central part. And now I will add the leads. For the leads, we just say, okay, I have a direction. I define a direction from my system to my lead. So here I will point to the left lead with this vector. And I will mm, uh, call the builder with the symmetry. And then I, have, I, I define something like a unitary cell. I say, okay, again, I have a, a non side element, which is zero. I have a coupling between two lead cells, which is minus one. And if I repeat this, I, I get some infinite leads. So just, if you can also plot this, it looks so, yeah, you don't see very much. It's just this side and, and the coupling, but quant understands that this is some infinite leads. You can also now, if you have an infinite system, you can plot the dispersion relation, uh, that's done here. And you can compare to the analytical result, which you would expect for, for just a type binding model where you have this, two, the, this, this cosine formula, you see that perfectly fits. And now there's a command. You, now you want you have no, your separate uh, finite system, you have your leads, now you want to glue them together to have a, 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 this system with the leads attached. And there's a command called attached leads of the system. So you first attach the left, then there's this, you attach the right lead. There's just this reverse command where you just mirror it. And then if you plot, now you see you have your, your system with the leads on the left and on the right. And uh, now you can start to do some calculation. Um, so for instance, what we are going to do here, we, we like to look at the trans transmission. So again, we finalize the system and, um, and then we will calculate the uh, uh, transmission uh, probability for some energies. So here I just take some energy points. The quant S matrix calculates my scattering matrix. And here I just calculate the transmission from lead zero to lead one. That means here in this example, from the left lead to the right lead. Okay, let's do that. So you see, it's um, it, it's very simple here. The structure, the, the transmission is either zero or one. And if you look, if you look at this very simple model, uh, or, or the, the it's only one in between minus two for the energy minus two and two. And if you look at the band structure, you see that the the band opens at minus two. So if you have an energy below, um, you, you cannot uh, transport this mode through the system. But here at, at two, uh, you, you have some, some modes in order to transport up to plus two and above again, there's nothing. And since you, your system is completely transparent, your transmission probability uh, is one. So that's why it's, you have this, this very simple form. But of course, now, if you have some, some non-trivial uh, um, system, you will get some energy dependence. And then you can use, for instance, lambda Boutique approach. Uh, that's, that's basic quant. If you have now some, some difference in chemical potentials, you can calculate what's the current which is flowing through the system. 
uh, and uh, stationary uh, regime. Uh, okay, so now we, we like to extend uh, this problem a bit. This was just to introduce your quant, how it works, to, to look at this fabri perot interferometer that Xavier was already uh, introducing uh, to you uh, yesterday. And this example is from this reference, and you can also find it on, on our paper here on tquant and on the tutorial. So for that, we have, again, we have a, a one-dimensional string, but now we have this cavity. So we have, we have two barriers. We have some, some potential, which is a bit lower in between these barriers. We inject an electrical um, pulse here, or it's more a potential, which we have on the left lead. And we will measure the current uh, after, after uh, the system. So we, we will switch on, in fact, here the potential, and we, we measure what happens just after switching on until the current reaches its uh, uh, stationary value. And so the Hamiltonian looks like that. Um, this first part here describes just the cavity uh, with the potential. The second part is the hopping on, on the whole chain. And the third part accounts for this potential and um, as you I think Xavier showed, you can just absorb um, the, this voltage uh, depends here uh, on the coupling between the lead and the, um, and the system such that only this coupling is, is time dependent and the lead is again time independent. Uh, okay, so what we use here as a potential is just some, some smooth step like this, we parameterize it like that. And then we can do this integral by hand. And I just write in a standard Python, I will write a function which calculates me this, this phi as a function of time. Um, okay. And then I, uh, I write here routine, which will calculate my, my quant system. Uh, it's again, you just define a lattice, you define uh, a system. Uh, or was it there? Maybe I have to execute this. Um, you define, you just set uh, uh, this chain in the central region. You set the neighboring couplings here to minus one. Here you have some function even where you just say all the neighbors are minus one. You set the cavity uh, potentials. Now that's, that's, the, that's the area in, here in between which you set. You set the uh, the potential of, of uh, the two barriers. And now for this coupling, so until now you have defined these two parts. Now we have to define this part. You can just put here between the, the lattice position zero and one, you can just put a time dependent function. You see this time dependent, dependent function depends on time and it will just evaluate e to the minus i phi. Uh, and the so that's all the rest is just delete it's the same code as before what you have seen and so i can execute this and if i now call this function i can also plot the system as before so now you see why well, you have uh, it's very boring again you have just a, a chain which goes to 80 you have the deletes it's a bit hard to see it's it is what parts you have a dispersion, which is the same. Okay, that's what you expected. Um, okay, so it looks fine. And now we can look again at the DC property. So we calculate the transmission uh, probability through the system. Um, and this takes some seconds. Okay, here it is. Um, it, in principle, all these peaks, you see now you have some peak structure. This is due to some resonances that you have in because you have these two barriers in between, you have some resonances. This will make you these, these peaks. They all should go until one. This is just because the points are not so dense. It looks like there's some variation, but they all go to one. And what we will do in our simulation, we will set later on the Fermi energy to minus one. So we, you will take into account all those modes, which are here below, in between minus two and minus one and you have these resonances and you uh, expect that T quant will somehow deal with it and, uh, and evolve the states and time. Uh, 
uh, okay, so now you have defined your system and uh, what you, uh, the last point you, you want to do is you want to measure the current. And also for, for that task, Quant provides you some tool. You have this Quant predefined operator. So here it's a current operator and you just say, okay, I want to calculate my current. You can give here position and here I say, I want to calculate my current from lattice position 77 to 78. That's just here, if I go up again, after, after this somewhere, after this right barrier, between the barrier and the lead, uh, I measure the current. And uh, okay, so this, until now there was nothing, there was no T quant. And now we start the time-dependent T-quant uh, simulation. So first I load this package. I know maybe I have to load this. Okay, I load this T-quant package. Um, then I define some time points. I say, okay, I have uh, here um, 2,000 points where I want to simulate my simulation until 2,000. Um, I have to set the occupation of the leads and each lead I have thermal equilibrium. I have to fix the chemical potential. And I said, I will put here minus one for the chemical potential. Um, the temperature I don't set, if, if I don't set, it will be zero. And uh, I take only the, the occupation for the left and for the right lead, it's the same. Um, so I just have to define it once. And this current is just due to this electrical uh, um, potential, which I will apply on the left. And so that's all. Now I can initialize my many body state. So this TQuant solver is called TQuant many body state. It just takes the system, the maximum time until where you want to run your simulation and, and this occupation here. And you remember just a few minutes before, Xavier showed all this algorithm that you have, uh, uh, you have to uh, calculate the scattering states. You have to know okay, what is my band structure? I mean, here the band structure is very simple. What are my states below the Fermi energy? Uh, for these states, I have to calculate the scattering states. I have to um, do this source sync algorithm. And all, all this stuff is, is hidden here inside, so you don't uh, see it really. Uh, but it's done internally. And uh, now what you can do, you can simply, uh, if you remember this algorithm, there, there are two steps. There's one step where you have to evolve the Schrodinger equation. So um, if I want to a certain, go to a certain point in time, I start from my equilibrium situation at t equals zero, and then I propagate, uh, uh, and I know I can just follow the evolution because I know the time depends on my Hamiltonian. And, and at a certain point in time, I can then evaluate some observable, for instance, the density and the current, and the current I will calculate here is also the, the formula that Xavier just showed is this integral where I have to know the wave function at a certain time. I have to sum over the leads with the occupation. I have to integrate over energy, um, which will give me the current. And you find exactly these two formulas, if you like, here in the code. Here just I step over my time points. You see here the loop. Uh, time is now just uh, uh, time, maybe five, five, six, eight. I evolve to this time. I say state evolves. Then there's a method which is more of technical interest. It's called refined intervals. It's just we have some adaptive routines here to to guarantee for the precision of this integral. So you you have to call it uh, explicit here to, to be sure that your calculation is. is correct, the numbers which you get. And then you can simply evaluate an operator, which you have defined before. So for instance, here this current operator, and it gives you a number. And this number here is, is the current. And then I just store these, these, these numbers here in the list. And at the end, I plot them. And so you get, you get this curve here, which you have seen already in the first lecture. Um, with this tiny structure. So you have this, this steps here, which are from this multiple reflections and these tiny oscillations on each step uh, are due to the interference of, of the wave, which is uh, traveling in, in, in the cavity. And um, so this is the way how, how you perform a basic t simulation. 
And, and this last principle here, I mean, these last steps are always very simple. It's most, most of the work, if you like, is in the definition of the system. Uh, uh, then you are kind of flexible. And uh, the idea is that everything you can do with quant works uh, with, with T quant. So I am not familiar with this topological stuff, but people are doing topological uh, systems with quant. So you can uh, use this, uh, you should be able to use this also for T quant. And just you have seen here, these cells I haven't executed. And that's what, what Xavier also mentioned. It takes a lot of time, uh, this T quant simulation. You have seen here that there are a lot of, of, of resonances. So this, this, this integral here is kind of nasty to do numerically and uh, Tiquan will put here a lot of points to get a precise result. And that's why even though the system looks very simple, you have just this, this simple chain, it, it runs, I don't know, one or two hours on a cluster. Um, I don't know what it calls. Um, okay, so... That's the basic simulation. Let's go to just to show, now you have seen how it works, to show that you can do more than a 1D string. This is another example we have in our paper, and it's also on the tutorial. We have this graphene flake. You see it has very, uh, uh, yeah, just some, some shape. And, uh, and in, in the system, we have put some electrodes here at one point, and now we excite the system. Initially, you know, these electrons are at equilibrium, then we excite, we put some pulse here, and this will excite the electrons, they will be reflected here, and eventually um, the, the system relaxes because it's open, we have a lead here attached. But uh, let's say you're interested here in, in the dynamics of, of, this, um, of this excitation, of this propagation here of, of the electrons inside. And um, you, you can do this uh, in a very similar way with T-Quant. And this is just, uh, the, and the way it works to get the shape here is very much like in a paint program. You know, if you have a paint program, you just draw the border and then you say fill with some color. And here, if you look closely, you see we have taken here three circles and we just overlap these circles. And then we say, okay, fill, fill this uh, stuff with graphene. And uh, this is what Quant does here. So this is the code. Um, we have, you see here the circle, and then we can just say here, fill, fill my system, fill my, uh, made out of these three circles with graphene. So you see here, there's a honeycomb lattice for graphene. And um, yeah, the rest is just put uh, the potential somewhere, the electrode with some shape with the leads, and, uh, and that's it. So if I execute, um, I get here from this code, uh, I get uh, this uh, graphene um, system. And again, I can cut the bands. And uh, you see now it looks a bit more complicated, uh, this band structure. And we, again, we fixed uh, from the energy here to minus one. And you see um, you have to take all these bands here into account, uh, which are below here, uh, this, this black, uh, dash time. So here in this example, we like to calculate uh, density. So again, there's just a density operator, uh, which will do this job for us. And then the, the, the T quant part is pretty much the same. You fix the lead occupation, uh, you have some time steps, you initialize this many body state, and then you just step over, uh, over the time points, you evolve to a time point, you, uh, yeah, you refine to be numerically precise, you evaluate uh, your density operator and you just plot the result. Quant has some, here's some plot function which will plot you this density in the form here of your system. And so you get directly these this snapshots here. And um, so you see it's very uh, intuitive. You see here, this is just after the excitation, this is around this electrode. Uh, and then this, this pulse here, starts to spread and uh, just uh, spreads over the whole system. It's getting reflected uh, and so on. If we would wait long enough, then it would uh, go again to, to equilibrium here. The delete is not shown, but delete is here on, on the right-hand side. 
uh, okay, so this was just to show we, we can do more, more complicated stuff. And I have a last example, which is maybe more in the spirit of the school. It's uh, a pumping of, of spins uh, um, in, again, in the one dimensional chain. This is an example here taken from this uh, publication. Uh, you can find the theory uh, on, on that system and also an exact solution under uh, slow pumping. And so the system looks like that. So you have, again, nearest neighbor hoppings, but now here on each side, you have a, a spin up and a spin down component of your, um, of your electrons. And um, you have this coupling term, which couples only to one side of the system. Here it's only to, to the center zero. You have this product here, this function with, with this uh, sigma vector. Um, and uh, you can, and this example is, is nice for, uh, because uh, to, you can see that you can basically write down this analytical formula very much in quant because you can use matrices also in quant here as couplings and uh, on site elements. So here I define the Pauli matrices and then I can just, uh, I can again say, okay, I want to have a square lattice but now the number of orbitals is two, so I can put two by two matrices into quant. So you see here, I define my pumping function. It's just a function which depends on time and which will return me a matrix. Matrix is just this product, M times sigma. I can define uh, uh, on-site elements and couplings um, in a very similar way. And so in a very short code, I have uh, again defined my system. I can that's the current uh, Z component, which we will measure. We can express this again with this operator. And if we, you directly simulate this part now with, with TQuant, I, I haven't shown the code because it's the same as before, you, you will find the following. So you initially, you don't pump. So you start your pumping at zero. So you have uh, here this, this large excitation, but then it, it relaxes to some, uh, a stationary value. But you see that this relaxation is very, very slow. So you have to simulate a lot, a long, long, long time. And um, and this is here just at, at the very end. You see you oscillate around this very tiny value. And for instance, here it took two, two days. So it's really um, well, a lot of energy which is wasted for this way. Uh, I don't know, just, just this number. And so what's, what's much more intelligent in this way to do is you, you go to a rotating frame, you can do this transformation around the, the Z axis. And then in this, in this rotating basis, your system is time independent. You see, you have a splitting here uh, between the spin up and the spin down component. You have some, some energy shift, which will account for this uh, uh, current, which, uh, which persists here. And in this rotating frame, of course, you can also write down your system and you, you can use now, I don't know, a scattering matrix approach or here, I just do it with quant, I do the same. I just uh, uh, calculate my, my many body state and I will evaluate this, this current operator just at initial time because you get already the, the result uh, uh, as before in, in the long time limit. And you see here in one minute, you get your uh, results. And, and this is a bit uh, the, the summary. Um, also here, here you have seen, here you have plotted just against the exact result. Uh, if you vary this angle, so you see you fit precisely the analytical formula um, with, with quant and that's a bit, yeah, the idea you can, you get exact numbers from these calculations, but if you get them fast or slow might depend on the uh, formulation. So if there's a uh, quant will only, t quant will only do the numerical part, but if there is a smart formulation which you can do analytically before, uh, then uh, t quant will not get it. So you often you have to work, you put some work inside and, um, uh, but then you, yeah, you should get the same result. And um, yes, with, with that, I'm, I'm at the end. So uh, all these examples are from, yeah, I think from the tutorial, from the 
the main paper and uh, just have a look if you consider this might help then uh, yeah just uh, try out and uh, okay so thank you thank you very much thomas uh thanks also to xavier it's very 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 interesting i enjoyed very much this uh, last example in particular um so time for questions So, so this um, you said that this uh, um, this notebook uh, is going to be available online, right? Uh, this notebook, uh, maybe not, but all these examples I've taken from the Tikvant um, site, okay, website, and and they are better documented on this website, and also from the paper. I mean, this graphene okay. example is from. But Thomas, maybe maybe we can send the this notebook on it. People yeah, we can also do that. Yeah, why not? But great. Uh, yeah. great, great. So that we can we can post it in in the website. It's uh, it's really great material. Uh, very interesting. Lot 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 to play. <laughs> lot, <laughs> to, lot to do. <laughs> Questions, uh, Fabio. Yes. So, thank you, Luis, for the word. Thomas, nice Python code. <laughs> I like it. Look. Uh, in, in one part, you mentioned the time computational cost, two days uh, using 48 cores. When you change it to the rotating system, uh, how fast you solve the, the problem? Ah, I solve it. Oh, I've written it here. I solve it in, in one minute on my laptop. <laughs> ah, okay. Nice, nice, nice. A big difference. Thanks. So yes, maybe, big, maybe big. A comment on the computing time. The, the, for instance, the example on the Fabri Perrault, it takes a long time, two hours or something like that. Um, for a very simple reason is that you have a very, very large separation of time scale here. You have, you have the, the bandwidth, that's a one time scale. I mean, edge bar versus this bandwidth is one time scale. And then you have the time of flight between the two barriers. And if you make this barrier very, very far away from each other, then you have a very la large separation of time of, of flight, I mean, of time scales, and then you have to simulate for a long time. If you take the kind of example we saw earlier uh, today, uh, more like bulk physics, where you, you don't have so many uh, energy scales, or they are in the same pocket, uh, then you get the answers much, much faster. So it's, it's really uh, how, how you're trying to stretch. If you want to really to do nanoelectronics, you really have a Fermi energy, which is much larger than other energy scales, and then you start to, uh, uh, to to need computing time. But there are many situations where you get things on, on your laptop in a few minutes. Right. Xavier uh, and Thomas, thank you for your comments. Thanks for the question. Let's go to uh, Halil has a question. Oh, thank you very much for your very nice talk. Um, OK. Uh, I'm asking to myself uh, that probably is also useful use this Floquet Tormalis in order to simulate the Floquet Hamiltonian and compute, for example, the scattering uh, Floquet matrix. Uh, for example, to solve this problem of the rotating magnetic moment. Um, do you know about some examples or do you have probably some code Simulating these floquets Hamiltonians could be applied in, in quant, for example, because the problem is reduced to a time-independent problem. Uh, I, I mean, for, for this for this particular problem, I also used Floquet, and it gives you the, the same uh, result. But for quant, I, I don't have anything general, and for quant, I don't know if, if uh, at least I, I don't have. And, no, but but you, for this example, it's somehow trivial to do, or it's very simple to do floquet. So there, there are several things that you can do. We, you, you can get formulas where you reduce the floquet, the conductance in a floquet situation to uh, essentially integrals of the output of quant. That, that's possible. We have done that in several situations. Uh, we don't have a, a general floquet solver. So if you, you cannot just give uh, different harmonics and get the result, this is not something we have worked on. Something you can do on the other hand is just to, to send a, a, a series of pulses 
uh, that is periodic. And then you wait and, and T-Quant will just give you the answer. That works. Directly, okay. actual observables. Not, 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 uh, it's not, the, the concept of, of uh, flow K-Hamiltonian is not there in T-Quant, at least at the moment. But you get the actual observables, what you will see, including all the excitations, particular excitations, which are not necessarily a trivial problem. OK, thank you. So let's uh, go. There's another question by uh, Raoul. Uh, you can just uh, unmute yourself and ask. Raoul can, can you hear us? Let's wait for the question. So, Question is written there. He says, I want to know if there is a simple way to perform a self consistent calculation either with quant or t quant. Yeah, I mean, that's what just what Xavier mentioned. We, we have done um, uh, self consistent uh, problems just for, for time limits. I couldn't show this. So it's this paper of 2017 or 18 where, uh, for instance, this, this plasmons, uh, we have uh, calculated uh, pl uh, plasmons. And we have now a solver in order to do this, uh, these kind of or very general self-consistent problems. And the solver will be, uh, uh, because there's a lot of technical stuff which you have to do, otherwise it's very inefficient. And in principle, it's ready and it will be uh, in, in the next release, which will hopefully appear soon. Uh, and uh, yes, so very soon. Uh, it's it's more the documentation and so on, which which has to be written. And uh, but but the rest. Is... So right now, I am the bottleneck. I I, I have to <laughs> and, <laughs> and I have too much stuff on my on my desk. But this is coming up. Maybe I, I could also comment that um, uh, so this is self consistent uh, in T quant. So for instance, taking into account uh, electron electron interaction at the at the time dependent R three level, or we could also do. Uh, uh, for instance, the, the electromagnetic environment of the Josephson junctions. And uh, we have several examples where it's, it's quite general. Also. You can do self consistent calculation in a very general way. We have also another solver, uh, a very different, nothing to do with time dependent, that solves the electrostatic problem. So, Poisson equation, if you want, together with, quant, uh, so with the quantum problem, self consistently. And this is also something that is coming up. Uh, it's not totally ready, but almost. So it's this one I, I expect maybe uh, uh, during this winter. Like, uh, so this fall, the first one for T-Quant, and uh, three months later, the one uh, with the electrostatic solver. So if you want to have like, a, like to put real gates uh, and, and put real voltages and calculate what is the potential seen by the, your electrons, uh, this will be available soon. Okay, hey, thanks, thanks, thanks a lot for 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 all the answers. So uh, we have had already uh, several questions. I don't know if there's uh, no more questions. Then we will thank uh, Xavier and Thomas again and all the speakers of of today. It was really great to have you all. Um, great session, and um, so uh, see you again uh, next week. We will resume on Tuesday, and. Um, and so if, if you if you missed any of the talks, all the talks will be there uh, in the YouTube channel of the Virtual Science Forum. So just uh, take a look, take your notes and, and come recharge for, for next week. And thanks again to all the speakers that, that made this possible. Thanks. All right, thank you very much, Luis. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, thanks Takashi. It was thanks. great to be here.